Good morning. So, welcome to the course American Literature and Culture. I am Aisha Iqbal Vishwamohan and we will be doing a lot of American literature as the course suggests and uh, how this literature has been grounded and also is grounded in American um, socio-political and cultural life. So, literature will be foregrounded, but also we will understand how important or how necessary the um, winds of cultural change have been in order to shape uh, American literature as it happens in the literature of uh, every nation, every country. Um, about the course, now I know that you are registered for the course, so you already have some idea of what the course is all about. So, let me just repeat the course uh, or the objective of the course. The aim of the course is to inculcate an appreciation of American texts. And I, here I am talking about, see whenever I uh, say American literature, I am going to uh, include or um, as they say, I am going to cover um, some or certain specific authors and texts. Please remember that literature uh, of any country, especially of the United States of America, it is so vast, so huge, is practically impossible to include every major trend and every major author. Learning as you must know is a constant process. Here I am just giving you as the course, as the title of the course suggests an introduction to the course. While we are doing the course, I will be talking about various cultural influences, various uh, um, political movements. Uh, I will also be talking about uh, uh, other works of uh, literature, the great works of literature. My request would be that all of you must start looking up these things. It is a, uh, perhaps you are doing it as part of your uh, course, you are already a student somewhere, you are an American literature is part of your course. Perhaps you are doing this um, out of interest, you just want to know, know something more about American studies and uh, literature and culture. This is an excellent opportunity to know, to get an entry point into this vast domain. So, coming back to what this course uh, aims to do. The idea is to uh, inculcate an appreciation of specific American authors and texts. There will be some attention paid to the literary history of the United States and also uh, the literary culture of America. Um, all texts are by some of the most prominent 20th century American writers, fiction writers, dramatists. Uh, short story writers and also some poetry. Now, uh, when I say 20th century, um, as you can see right here. Now, we are lo looking at uh, these key words here. These uh, words will or these terms will keep occurring or re they will recur frequently throughout the course. Now, um, when we talk about, uh, uh, now lo let us look at a term like the um, transcendentalism. Okay. This is not strictly speaking a 20th century phenomenon. So, you will be getting introduced to the major writers of uh, the 20th century as well as a few important writers from the preceding century as well. Therefore, now this is the focus of this course. This is where the focus or the major concentration of the course lies. The romantic period which is strictly speaking the 19th century. We are not talking about the British romantic period. Please understand that we are talking about the American romantic period, literary romantic period. 
the realistic period which is more or less 20th century, the modern of course 20th century and then more contemporary literature also, but the focus is on these three periods. So, 20th century American writers yes, but there will also be uh, some weight given to the 19th century literature as well. Now, um, coming to the question that who is this course meant for, who are the target audience. Now, please remember the course can be enjoyed by anyone who is interested in literature. It will help you at the end of the course you will and this I am very certain that at the end of this the course will help you appreciate great works of American literature. You will understand to interpret the literary text in a much better way. You will read between the lines, you will understand how certain writers use certain specific words to convey a, a specific meaning, uh, how to appreciate poetry, how to appreciate drama. So, all these you know what are stage directions and all. So, um, if you are into literature, even if you are not a student at the moment, you will understand or you will I am very sure benefit from the course. Specifically, the course is for those who are currently pursuing degrees in literature, especially um, uh, who are pursuing a course, a major course in American literature. Uh, it will also help those who wish to appear for competitive exams such as, uh, let us think of uh, GRE or JRF and here you will find many or you know uh, references where you, you can benefit uh, from this particular course to appear for competitive exams focused on literature, right? net UGC and all we all know how, what are the kinds of you know specific questions that come uh, for these exams and I am very sure that this course will help you. If not, I mean please let me make it very clear, this is not a course that will help you succeed. So, this is not a coaching co co course or this is not a guarantee that you will clear your GRE or JRF, but it will help. It's, it will definitely be of benefit to you. Um, I have taken uh, certain canonical texts from American literature which I feel would be uh, of immense use to you as a students of literature and also as uh, educated readers of literature. So, what is a canon? A canon very simply put is a work that has stood the test of time. It was relevant then when it was first written and it is relevant today. Um, I am telling you all this just so that we are very clear about what is the nature of the course. So, uh, canonical works that are included in this course are uh, The Portrait of a Lady by Henry James, An American Tragedy by Dreiser, The Sun Also Rises by Ernest Hemingway, The Age of Innocence by Edith Wharton and we have the plays, The Children's Hour by Lillian Hellman, A View from the Bridge by Arthur Miller. So, I am just giving you some of the texts here. If you go to the website and Pitel website, I am very sure that uh, uh, under the course description all these works are mentioned. We are also going to look at select works by Flannery O'Connor, Edgar Allan Poe and also very recent uh, work of uh, non-fiction by Christopher Hitchens. So, um, what I am trying to say is that uh, um, there has been lot of attention paid to the structure of the course. Okay, we have um, works that are important, works that are provocative, works that have stood the test of time, plays which are performed over and again, uh, books which are uh, uh, novels which are still relevant, writers who have been a major influence on uh, all succeeding generations of writers. So, that is what we are taking. So, we are not just looking at some uh, writer who has won the latest Pulitzer. 
you know pulitzer is an important award this that's the highest achievement in literature in america so this is not the intention this is not what my intention is i mean we are looking at those authors whose works have survived they are not forgotten even though they were written 150 years ago that's the idea so um this as i already mentioned before this is an entry point to the vast domain of american literature so um, please try to understand that that this is what we are doing okay we are going to look at certain canonical writers and if you are interested in more literature then it's up to you and there will be other courses also soon uh, that will be more focused and specific on certain um, specific uh, maybe um a period okay so the romantic american literature the transcendentalist all these things are but this uh, all these things have been taken but this is a course that is more um interested in providing an overview to american literature let me now having told you what is there let me also tell you what is not there so um you wouldn't find works by asian americans or african americans or latin americans in other words the multicultural aspect of american literature is not a part of this course however let me assure you there will be another course for that uh, and we have to always remember the canvases of of american literature is extremely huge so uh, whatever i have just mentioned asian american latin american afro american every area is a course in itself and i'm sh very sure that you will be uh, having specific courses in these specific territories very soon okay but for the moment this is what uh, the focus or the interest of the course is so this is what we are going to do so the romantic period in american literature the realistic period the modern period we you will be during uh, uh the course of our inter interaction you will be uh, finding me talking a lot about the roaring 20s transcendentalism movements literary movements like imagism counterculture the lost generation harlem renaissance all these things will be mentioned so please try to benefit from these concept these terms do your own study as well so don't just depend on this course you are uh, and i'm uh, urging you i'm encouraging you to do a lot of your own reading or uh, self study every time you come across a word or a concept that you don't understand please look it up that's the best way to keep your learning ongoing and increasing let me also reiterate that we acknowledge that to understand america one has to understand the immigrant voices and cultures so no one is saying that those literatures are not important we have to after all understand that uh, today slightly more than one third of americans are of african asian hispanic uh, and east and south asian origins all these literatures are extremely important they are adding to the canvas of american literature the canon of american literature these are important we have to recognize and respect that so there will be different courses soon but right now we what we have is an overview of the uh, core american the canonical american texts especially from these periods the romantic the realistic the modern period um for the sake of convenience let me tell you we divide american literary period into the colonial period when america was still a colony okay it was ruled by the british people so the colonial period is between 1607 and 1775 then you have the early national period okay we are talking about uh, independence of america 
So, uh, that early national period falls between 1775 and 1865. You have the romantic period between 1828 and uh, 1865. You have the realistic period 1865 to 1914. Then you have the modern literature, the modernist period bet between 1914 to 1939. And then you have the contemporary period, 1939, and it's important as the beginning of the Second World War. So, 1939 to present, and that's what is contemporary literature in America. And of course, you can talk, go on and on about postmodern and post postmodern literature. So, every country has that, and uh, so does America. These uh, boundaries are just for our own understanding. There are, let me tell you, there is nothing hard and fast about the periods that I have mentioned. Everything merges into something else. But remember, for the sake of convenience, this is the way we divide the major epochs. Now, um, as I was uh, telling you before, in this course, we are concerned with uh, the Romantic period also understood as the coming of age of a specific kind of American literature. American literature came of age, it became important, it reached the peak of its achievement. So, this is the period, the major writers are Emerson, Thoreau, Edgar Allan Poe, Herman Melville and Nathaniel Hawthorne. The Romantic period is also well known as the age of transcendentalism and uh, as you know, this is a philosophical and literary movement particularly associated with Emerson and was centered in the New England region of America. I would suggest that you always keep a map of America, of the United States of America. If you are interested in learning more and better, then uh, it would be of immense value if you do these things and uh, you will enjoy the course much more if you know uh, these things that uh, where was this specific region located in, what is the literary and um, maybe the cultural influence or importance of this region in a particular period. The realistic period 1865 to 1914, the beginning of the First World War. It is marked by the novelists like Mark Twain, the writer of The Adventures of Tom Sawyer and The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. Okay, then you have William Dean Howells, Bret Hart and Edith Wharton, Henry James and Theodore Dreiser. So, that those are the realists and we will be doing their works also. You have to remember that uh, the novels of many of these realistic writers were rooted in their milieu, in their region, in their socio-cultural milieu. So, uh, for example, Mark Twain is the author of or the writer of the Mississippi region, whereas Edith Wharton is more centered on New York. So, uh, when we do the age of innocence, you will understand this better. The modern literature, this is marked by the period between the two wars, 1914 and 1939. Uh, also at this point, let me introduce you to something called Poetry Magazine. This was founded by uh, Harriet Monroe in 1912 in Chicago. The magazine published new and experimental writers who were interested in bringing out certain innovations in poetry. The prominent among these poets are Edwin Arlington Robinson, Robert Frost, Carl Sandburg, Wallace Stevens, Ezra Pound, T. S. Eliot, Marion Moore and E. E. Cummings. So, these are the modernists, these are the modern poets. Many of these poets, they were interested in uh, imagism, this is, they were called like this poetry is images poetry. And uh, Ezra Pound, another great poet of this tradition, 
he once wrote to Monroe that uh, this is the sort of American stuff that I can show here in Paris without it being ridiculed. That is the importance of imagism. For Pound, this kind of poetry was objective, no slither, direct, no excessive use of adjectives, no metaphors that will not permit examination, straight talk straight as the Greek. So, it, this is what poetry should be according to Pound. So, therefore, the importance of the modernism uh, or the modernist poetry and images movement. We have to understand that uh, this is the period and uh, Edwin Arlington Robinson and Robert Frost can be recognized as the pioneers of the American Renaissance in this period. Um, Carl Sandburg, and Edgar Lee Masters, these people took poetry forward in quest of change and freedom. So, these were the poets who not only expressed themselves differently, but they also saw life from a very different perspective. And talking about modernism, the great modernists of fiction are Sinclair Lewis, Gertrude Strain, Sherwood Anderson, John Dos Pesos, F. Scott Fitzgerald, William Faulkner, Ernest Hemingway and Thomas Wolfe, just to name a few. We have to also know what is uh, and what was the roaring twenties. We are talking about the 1920s and this period is also popularly called the jazz age. Remember the jazz age was a cultural period and movement that took place in America during the 1920s. This is a period when both new styles of music and dance emerged, the da jazz kind of da music. Hmm? It is largely credited to African Americans employing new musical techniques with traditional African traditional music. Jazz soon expanded to America's white middle class also and today is one of the most popular forms of music. This is also the period um, which is also called the Harlem Renaissance. During this period Harlem, okay, this is a part of the New York City, it is a borough uh, and where um, it became a, a period, a, a sort of Renaissance for whom? Especially for the black writers, artists, musicians, photographers, poets and scholars. So, these people, the, for example, the, the Afro-American citizens, they started asserting their identity and the movement is popularly called the Harlem Renaissance. And later on, this uh, movement also influenced the white people, okay, but that is something that we will see later on. So, you have to remember while talking about Harlem Renaissance that uh, um, many of the writers they had come from the south, the south of the United States and why were they uh, migrating? They were fleeing the oppressive caste system that was so prevalent in the south and the idea was or the intention was to find a place where they could freely express their talents. Some of the important artists whose works uh, achieved uh, recognition included Langston Hughes and Claude McKay, then County Cullen and uh, Zora Neale Hurston and Jean Tumor. Walter White and James Weldon Johnson. W. E. B. Du Bois emerged as one of the most talented artists to leave the south. So, these are the names that you should be familiar with. Langston Hughes, Claude McKay, County Cullen, Zora Neale Hurston, Jean Toomer, Walter White, James Weldon Johnson and W. E. B. Du Bois, B. O. I. S. This is also the period 
which is uh, popularly known as the lost generation. Now, the lost generation, the term was introduced by Gertrude Stein, a modernist American writer who made Paris her permanent home. Um, the story is, and uh, this is the story that uh, Hemingway tells us in his great book, A Movable Feast. Um, Gertrude Stein's mechanic, car mechanic was upset when his young employee did not uh, do the work satisfactorily on Stein's car. And the mechanic said that the young were all a lost generation, difficult to prepare for work or focus. So, this is where the term originated, this is how the term originated. So, Hemingway, a friend of Gertrude Stein, at least uh, they were uh, friends for quite a while. He made it a popular concept when he included it as an epigraph in his novel, The Sun Also Rises. That is the novel that we are going to do. The lost generation therefore, really referred to that group of men and women who came of age during the first world war and who felt disillusioned in this unfamiliar post war world. So, disillusionment, anxiety, angst, these are the terms that you would be coming across very frequently when we talk about the sun also rises. As you know, the lost generation was a group of American writers, most of whom emigrated to Europe and worked there from the end of the first world war until the great depression. So, America was filled with cynical people who were facing less than certain future. Many of these writers felt that their home and life could never be repaired and that the United States that they knew was gone completely, a civilization which was over, gone with the wind. So, you will learn all these things and much more in this course. So, what I was trying to do is to give you an overview of what are the things you can expect from this course. That is not all of course, we will be doing a great deal more of modernist literature and also uh, the contemporary period, the romantics. So, all these things are a major part of this course. Now, uh, coming to the mode of evaluation, um, at the end of uh, every major text, you will be given regular assignments which you should be completing and submitting online. So, that is going to be a part of your assessment. At the end of the course, there will be a proctored end semester exam. Please keep looking at the websites and read the mails with attention, because many of the dates will be communicated to you uh, online and uh, they will be displayed on the website. So, please be attentive to these things, that is the most important thing. S uh, regularly submitting the assignments, many a time we feel uh, or we face problems because candidates, participants fail to submit assignments on time. Okay. You must do your best, if you want to earn your certificate, please, please make sure that you are attentive, you are attending the lectures, you are looking at the lectures, learning something from them and also submitting the assignments. Questions will be multiple choice types. Okay, and you will soon realize that how important or how beneficial these kinds of questions would be um, in order to crystallize your learning. So, this is what I, uh, I had to, I wanted to tell you about the course and I do look forward, all of us at NPTEL, we all look forward to having you with us for this course. So, all the best and I welcome you all. Thank you very much.